Since our Strums and Guido Hike developed the relationship between projective geometry and photogrammetry in Germany in 1883, we can identify four stages in the history of photogrammetry. 1. Plane table photogrammetry, 1850 to 1900, 2. Analog photogrammetry, 1900 to 1960, 3. Analytical photogrammetry, 1960 to present, 4. Digital photogrammetry. After reading extensively on this subject, I decided to contact Chris McGlone, editor-in-chief of two editions of the Manual of Photogrammetry, published by ASPRS. He holds a PhD in photogrammetry from Purdue University. He has worked on the development of photogrammetric instruments and computer vision for cartographic feature extraction and visual simulation. Since he is also the co-author of the textbook Introduction to Modern Photogrammetry, I thought he could help us navigate through these stages. Each stage represents different technological approaches to the fundamental problem of determining positions from imagery. Plane Table Photogrammetry A plane table is a flat board on a tripod that holds a map. The operator sighted through a telescope on a protractor and recorded the distance and angles to various objects. A camera set to take the place of the telescope recording the angles to all of the objects in the scene. Photogrammetry at this point was done graphically, either using plane table photographs or photographs taken from known positions and orientations. Analog instruments were developed to perform the intersection calculations by mechanically reproducing the geometry of the image. A number of variations were developed. In one case, the lens was modeled by a ball joint and the light rays through the lens by metal rods. The operator viewed the scene in stereo through the optics and a small dot was superimposed on each image. The operator could place the floating mark on the ground by changing its position relative to the images and thereby trace contours or measure elevations. Another variation was to actually use projectors to project both images onto a tracing table, using analyph, two color, i.e., cyan slash red, to produce stereo. First order, high precision, analog stereo plotters, were extremely precise, complex, and expensive. Products were hard copy vector drawings of contours and planimetric features. Analytical photogrammetry refers to solving the image ray projection numerically, instead of by analog computation. Coordinates of points of interest were measured on the images using comparators. The position slash orientation of the images and the positions of the points were calculated using the collinearity equations, which state that the perspective center, the image point, and the object point all lie on a straight line. Analytical stereo plotters used a computer to calculate the image coordinates corresponding to the operator's input X, Y, Z, world coordinates, then drove the image stages so that the operator saw a continuous stereo model. Analytical stereo plotters still worked with film, although some could digitally superimpose extracted vectors on the stereo image. While hard copy products were still produced, the data could also be delivered digitally in the form of a digital terrain model or GIS vectors. Digital photogrammetry, as the name suggests, deals with digital imagery. As with analytical photogrammetry, position calculations are done mathematically. Special purpose stereo plotting equipment is no longer needed. A computer workstation with good image display capacity is sufficient if equipped with a stereo viewing capability. The use of digital imagery enables the automation of tasks such as elevation extraction and operator assistance in other tasks, such as control point measurement. Products are increasingly image-based, with the most common product now the ortho image, which is an image with elevation effects removed such that it can be used like a map. Orthomosaics, formed by combining ortho images, are commonly used as base maps for GIS, systems and as the basis for topographic maps. Other common products now include 3D models of terrain and buildings. 
How will we know where we are heading, if we don't know where we are coming from? It's easy to forget that many of the techniques we use today are based on early works from hundreds of years ago. It began with Leonardo da Vinci, who worked on projective geometry, and continued on with artists like Albrecht Dürer, who used the laws of perspective to create an instrument that could be used to create a true perspective drawing. In the next video we will explore how we go from 2D to 3D. As a professional photographer, the idea of transforming two-dimensional images into three-dimensional ones captivated my attention from minute one. I started to wonder what happens with all the information that is enclosed in a photograph. In the upcoming videos we will tackle how to start your own project, covering the basics of an aerial photography workflow. We will talk about flight plans, including nadir and oblique flight plans. How to prepare our gear, including adjusting our camera settings. We will not forget to look at georeference, position and 3D orientation and scale. Remember these video tutorials are an adaptation of the book So You Want to Create Maps Using Drones, by Kike Calvo, a field guide for photographers, researchers and conservationists. I hope you are enjoying this photogrammetry tutorial. I invite you to watch our previous video to learn about the following, what is photogrammetry? Applications of photogrammetry. What skills are needed to become a photogrammetrist? Thank mm -hmm. you.